this Just For Kids video. If you're having a little trouble with the picture on the TV now, maybe you just need to adjust the tracking on your VCR. That's the little switcher button just at the bottom of your tape player. If you need help, just call mom or dad or big brother or big sister. They'll help you. See you soon and enjoy the show. Travel the world, but they seldom go out. Well, how can this be? You're about to find out from Just for Kids Home Video. <laughs> Get ready for a whole new world of friends and fun. Coming, ready or not. Meet Susie Sponge, Countess Decomb, Molly and Max, and Flash Fluoride. You're the cleverest toothpaste you have ever met. Perhaps I am clever. They're the Tooth Crush family. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? They live in a place where anything can happen. Just run away, too! You're cool! <laughs> Whether they're flying high... This is what I call flying! ...learning about nature... Oh, that's where butterflies come from. They come from caterpillars. Well, I'll be. Chasing toy dinosaurs. What? <laughs> Take cover! It's raining dinosaurs! <laughs> or on a serpent safari. That wave was the biggest I've ever seen. Every day brings them a new adventure. <laughs> it's great! If you hadn't thought the world of the bathroom could be so exciting... This is the life. Then you haven't met the Toothbrush family. A full 90 minutes worth of squeaky clean fun. Available only from Just For Kids Home Video. Just for Kids Home Video has your recipe for fun, laughter, and adventure. Take us to your leader. With the coolest cats on video cassette. That's the kind of cat I am. <laughs> Madame Courget, Chief Goulash, and Pesto are cooking up plenty of exciting antics and surprises at the Ketchup Cafe. Someday, I'm gonna try to be good. Just to see if it works. <laughs> Featuring 22 tasty recipes designed for young cooks. Looks a bit messy, but it sure smells good. Ketchup, Cat to Cook, provides 95 minutes of fun kids will want to watch again and again. A work of genius. Oh, 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 thank you, madame. Look for the place where laughter is always on the menu. The more noise they are making, the more fun they are having. Catch it. Cat to cook. Watch that cat cook cat. Watch that From Just for Kids cook Home cat. Video. Cat cook cat. My oh my. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Yay! Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Every kid's favorite jungle friends are coming to video. Oh boy, fantastic! And they've got a lot to sing about. Dance to the beat. The best-loved characters from the hit series, Jelly Bean Jungle. Captain Banana is on the way. Star in a brand new musical adventure, only available on home video. If you like it, it'll feel brand new. Move your body to the music, get some talking to you. Just for Kids is proud to present... The feature-length world video premiere of Jungle Jamboree. Why am I me? Why am I me? Am I the best me that I'd like to be? Why Teaching am I wonderful me? lessons of what sharing and caring. Me? It's me, little old me. 
parents and critics are singing praises for Jungle Jamboree. When you pretend anything is possible. Here we go! To the silly dance. The Film Advisory Board calls it a fun and lively way to teach children important lessons. Silly, willy, silly dance. There's new stuff to learn every day, huh? When we're pretending, pretending. There's so much you can be. Kids First calls it an entertaining and educational children's video. Let's all be as silly as we want to be. Jump and jelly beans. I'll be right down. Whoa. So join Gus. Thanks, Goose. Gus. And all of his jungle friends. Wow. For a magical, song-filled <laughs> celebration. Jelly Bean Jungle. Home sweet home. Winner of the Film Advisory Board Award of Excellence and other prestigious awards. Can things possibly get better? It's Jungle Jamboree from Just for Kids Home Video. The name to remember in quality children's entertainment. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat Early in the morning, just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat all the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock. Ring. Morning. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are Morning, Elf. Hello, Pat. Granny Dryden's getting her pension at the post office. And uh, ten first class stamps, please, Mrs. Goggins. Oh, look. I do love the village fate. Do you know, I've never missed one since I was a girl. Mind, it's not like the old times. Oh, no, brass bands and drums, trumpets. Oh, but I hope there'll be some sort of music. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure. My old dad, you know, he played the... Bless me, what did he play? I know he made a lovely sound, something big and boomy like. I wonder whatever became of it. Here you are, Granny Dryden. Well, never mind. Now, Mrs. Goggins, would you kindly ask Pat to be sure to pop in this afternoon? I will, I will. That attic of mine. You know, there's all sorts of things up there. I've been wanting to get it cleared out ever since that old chimney pot blew off. Hello, Granny Dryden. Morning, Peter. Hello, Pat. Hello, Peter. Look at this. I thought you'd given up that old guitar. Nay, I'm off to Pencaster to learn how to play it properly like. You never know, I might get on the telly with it. <laughs> it would be nice to play something. Something big and boomy. You're sounding cheerful today, said Mrs. Goggins. It's the music in the air, said Pat. Music, said Miss Hubbard. That's what we need for a good fate. Now then, Reverend, do you think that old record player of yours could keep going long enough to churn out a few jolly old tunes? Oh, I think Ted'll be able to mend it. He's kept it going all these years. Oh, Pat, I nearly forgot. Granny Dryden asked if you'd pop in. Righto. Bye, Pat. I expect she's got something for the fate. Bye, all.
Bye, Pat. It's time for Pat to be on his way. Granny Dryden, you've got two letters today. Oh, Pat, I'm glad you've come. There's some things in the attic and they'll be just right for the fete. You know, some old hats and dressmakers' dummies and things. Could you climb up and have a look? Me old legs, you know, they're too wobbly for that ladder. They'll be there somewhere. Now, mind how you go. Let's have a look. Up we go. Do be careful, Pat. Hmm. It's a bit dark up here. I won't be able to see a thing. Hmm. Where do I start? What's in here? Ah, a torch. And it works. Right now, down to business. Oh dear, what a jumble. Just like my granddad's hat. Must have been here since I was a lad. Hmm, stylish. <laughs> I like that. What's over here? A chair. A coffee pot and kettle. Boxes and tubs. I say, this looks promising. Oh, it's uh, some sort of a bump bar thing, I think. It's too dusty to blow. Now then, better get this locked down. Look out below. Whoops. <laughs> Here, Pat, you gave me such a fright. I thought it was my old dad for a minute. You know, off to play in the Greendale Brass Band. Do you know you're the very image of him? Now I remember, Pat, it was the tuba, that's what he played. I tell you what, you know you're welcome to it. Why don't you learn to play it? You know, we could have a new band in Greendale. Real live music for the fate. Well, uh, I might do that. <laughs> Seems the right sort of size for me, big and boomy. Better than that little old bugle I had when I was a lad in the scouts. Thanks, Granny Dryden. Very kind of you. to this, Ted. Stop! Well, Ted. I reckon it wants a spot of something before it gives me headache, but... Let's try a drop of oil. <laughs> it's good stuff, this. It's a bit overpowered, but... Here, try some of these rags down its throttle. Thanks, Ted. 
I'd best be on my way now. Bye, Pot. Oh, dear. She won't start, Ted. Nay, it's no good, Pot. I can't mend it just now. It needs a new plug. Oh, dear, Jess. How on earth are we going to deliver all our letters? I'll tell you what, Pat. You could take the post bus out. I can give you a lift into the village to pick it up. I think you'd better sit in back with that thing. I can't risk getting a blast from it when I'm driving. Young Jess can keep me company. Are you with us, Pat? Ready. And off they went. But Pat just couldn't resist having another toot on the tuba. Oh! Ouch! What was that? Poor PC Selby. He ended up in a heap on the road. Pat was so busy puffing and blowing that he didn't see him. They passed Alf Thompson on his tractor. Oh! What was that? Sounds like a tire blowing. What a noise. Oh! Road hog! Here we are, and a good thing too, Pat. You and your blooming tuber. <laughs> Shouldn't be allowed to make a noise like that. Terrible rumpus. Pat was on his way again. At Thompson Ground, Jess thought he would stay somewhere quiet. But there was no one about. So Pat thought he'd have just one more try to get music from his tuba. <laughs> what was that terrible noise? Sorry, Dorothy. It was only me trying to make music. Music, Pat? It sounded more like a bomb going off. I never heard the likes of it. Dear me, there must be somewhere I can practice without frightening everyone. Up here. Nobody about. Hmm, nice and shady. <sighs> Just imagine if I could. Really, really could play the tuba. We could have a great time making music like the old days with the village band. I would practice every day so I could join and play, and I'd try to make a very lovely sound. I'm so lucky that I found this lovely tuba. Now I 
got a chance to try my hand With my practice every day I'd soon be proud to say That I can make a really lovely, really proper sound Putting up the music, we must get to know the score Think what we can play Oh, our music will be sure to have a beat the tuba it would make a sound sure to give a richer sound no mistake would make the sound complete it's lucky that i found this lovely tuba now i've got a chance to try my hand with my practice every day i'd soon be proud to say that i can make a really lovely really proper sound I'll try to make a really lovely, really proper song. Phew, I must have dropped off. Now then, let's have one more go at this tube. Miss Hubbard was busy in her garden. That... Morning, Miss Hubbard. A parcel for you. Did you hear that dreadful noise, Pat? What do you think it was? Um, well, <laughs> I couldn't rightly say, Miss Hubbard. Uh, I'll have to dash. Lots of tube, I mean, letters today. Bye. Well, I never in all my days... Later that evening... P.C. Selby was out and about making inquiries. He called at the church. Evening, Reverend. I wonder if you could help me with my inquiries. It's about these strange noises. There have been reports from all over Greendale. Some folks think it might be intruders from outer space. Even I, an officer of the law, was thrown from my bike by a loud noise and a vibration in the air. Um, yes, officer. This requires some thought. You know what the Bible says, I suppose? Make a loud noise and rejoice. Dear heavens, what's that? That's it, Reverend. Dreadful, I'd call it. I'll go and investigate. Stay here, Reverend, and if I'm not back in five minutes, allow me to join you, officer. Now, Reverend, this is a job for the constabulary. Oh, but I insist. Two heads are better than one. And besides, I know my way around the churchyard in the dark. Now, Reverend, we must go quietly. Or we'll never catch it. Lord, defend us. Careful, Reverend. We're close. Maybe I should fetch help. No time for that. Aha! I can see the culprit. A mysterious shape in the gloom. Look, over there. Good heavens, it's Pat! Pat? Hello, Reverend. Hello, PC Selby. What's all this about, Pat? Well, it's, it's, it's me tuba. Most commendable. He wants to make music. Oh, yeah, but you didn't fall off your bike, did you? I'll have a word with Major Forbes. He can teach you, Pat. He played something like it in the army. It's time to get ready for the fate. Ted Glenn's fixing the bunting. Pat's giving him a hand. Everybody helped. P.C. Selby came to keep an eye on things. He soon had his hands full. Whatever are these dummies for, Pat? They're for the knock the hat off stall. As well as helping with the preparations for the fate, 
Pat had his rounds to do. There were some letters for Thompson Brown. Dorothy was making jam to sell at the fete. Morning, Mrs. Thompson. Uh, I'll put these letters here. Bye. Bye, Pat. And in between, he had his tuba lessons at Major Forbes. Ready now? A one, two, three. Good man. At last it's time for the fate. Pat's collecting the children from the school. Not forgetting the teacher, Mr. Pringle. It'll be a real squash. Roll up. Three balls for five B. Try your luck. Knock all the hats off and win a prize. Come on, Charlie Pringle, have a go. Right you are. Off. Off. I won, I won. First prize and all. Oh, uh, thanks. Did you hear that? <laughs> I think the old record player's given up the ghost, Reverend. Let's just check these leads. Hmm, looks all right. This one seems okay, Ted. It's your old valves, Reverend. They've gone pop. And you can't get this type now. Then that's the end of the music. Oh, but we've always had music at the fete. Ever since I was a young lass and won the club dance competition. Well, this won't play again, that's for sure. I don't know what else we can do. Hold on, I've got an idea. Uh, Miss Hubbard, uh, could I have a word? I wonder where they're off to. <laughs> Heading to Miss Hubbard. Yes, that's where Pat stopped. And here's Peter Fogg on his motorbike. Peter's giving them a hand. What's this for? It's for the fate, said Pat. Mind how you go, Pat. How about bringing your guitar and joining in? Ye champion, said Peter. The piano jangled a bit on the way back. What's happening? Look, a piano. Gently now. Oh, oops. Oh, do be careful. It's a good job it's on wheels. Stop. That'll do. Here's Peter with his guitar. All right, Major. Good man. Here's an A. I say, could I just borrow one of these? Thank you so much. All ready now? Ready when you are, Major. By the right. Quick. March. Um, I mean, uh, all together now. Uh, one, two, three. Of the days when I was a lass. 
it's just too bad. They were having a busy summer in Greendale. Alf Thompson was getting the hay in. He could just about manage to squeeze between the houses with his load. But then he wasn't counting on something of a traffic jam in the middle of the village. Pat had left his van outside the post office and someone had left a lorry on the other side of the road. It's a job getting through. Steady does it. How's it doing on the other side? Oh dear, oh dear. Oops. I'll have to back up. Right, here we go again. It looks as though Alf is stuck. I wonder who the lorry belongs to. Whew. A right mess I've got myself into. That sounds like Miss Hubbard. She'll soon sort things out. Stop! You'll have to stop, Miss Hubbard. Oh! What's this, Alf? How am I to get through if you block the road with your tractor? I'm stuck, Miss Hubbard, between Pat's van and this lorry. Well, we can't wait here all day. Where is Pat? Pat? What's to do? said Mrs. Goggins. Don't take on now. Pat'll be back in a minute when he's done the village letters. It's this lorry, said Miss Hubbard. Who's left it here? There's no sign of a driver. What's going on? said Peter Frog. Has there been a crash? There will be if this lorry isn't moved, said Miss Hubbard. It looks like a builder's lorry. What's it doing in the village? Does that mean we'll have to wait around? I certainly hope not. Pat should be back soon. We need P.C. Selby. Here is P.C. Selby. Now then. Now then, what's all this? What's going on? You can't block the road like this, you know. Alf Thompson's stuck. It's not my fault, it's this lorry. And Pat's van. They all talked at once. What a mix-up. Wait a minute, here. wait a minute. Now then. Here, this headlight's broken. Now then, let's get things sorted out. Who does this lorry belong to? Pat was hurrying round the village with his letters. Pat! Who's that calling? Oh, it's Sarah, Pat's wife. Must be your forgetting day, Pat. You went off without your sandwiches. Here we are. Special delivery. Just like a parcel, said Pat. I'd better not pop them in somebody's letterbox by mistake. <laughs> You'll be hungry if you do. Bye! Bye, and thanks. Left a bit. They Go still on. hadn't sorted now, the traffic over to your right. Out. Stop. Left again. Now, a little to your right. Straight now. Straight. Stop. That's it. All over now. Left, he says, then right. Wish he'd make up his mind. Keep to your right. Back up a little. No, back again. Come straight on. Oh, you'll never get through there, you know. Alf, stop! Oh, over to the left! Mind the back! Oh, oh, dear! Stop! Back up a little! Then hard down on your left! Stop! You'll have to go back again! Now, now hard over to your left! No! Oh, oh, what have we here? 
You can't leave the place five minutes and look at it. Back a little note now, hand over to you. Oops! Mind the van! No, no, right! Right up there! You've got the all of a muzzle and stay in put till somebody moves that lorry. Hang on, said Ted. I'll give you a hand. Ted's lorry? So sorry, everyone, said Major Forbes. Ted's just giving me a hand at the hall. Borrowed the lorry. First traffic jam in Greendale, what? Soon be off. Morning, everybody. Just a word, Pat. Urgent parcel coming from London. Bought these tin soldiers for my collection. Now take good care of it, there's a good chap, what? Don't you worry, Major, said Pat. I'll see you get it safe and sound, the way you always do. Good man. Bye for now. Bye. You see, you see, Selby, it's quite easy when you know how. At last, Alf could get on his way. Miss mm -hmm. Hubbard decided she had wasted enough time and moved off whilst Peter Fogg started up his motorbike again. Leaving PC Selby and Jess with the road to themselves. Pat was helping Mrs Goggins to sort the rest of the letters and parcels. There were two parcels with no address. Mrs Goggins found a label that had come unstuck. Oh, it's this modern glue, said Mrs Goggins. They're forever dropping off. Now, which one shall I put it on? I think it's off that one, said Pat. But that leaves one without an address, said Mrs Goggins. Don't worry, said Pat. As soon as somebody says, where's my parcel, I'll know it must be theirs. Simple. Oh, <laughs> I'd never have thought of that. Goodbye, Pat. Mind how you go. Bye. Now then, Jess, we'd better take the Major's parcel first. It's something special. Toy soldiers. Pat was on his way. Pat arrives at Garner Hall. Won't be long, Jess. Looks as though the Major's busy. I could have sworn the bell was working. Whoops. Uh, anybody in? Hello? Major? Major Forbes? Uh, anyone at home? I'll leave the parcel here. It'll be quite safe. What's that? <laughs> Must be me imagining things. Where is everybody? They must be having a tea break. Pat was on his way.
that's just the place for a quiet picnic, Jess. Under that tree. Under that tree will do nicely. Oof, that was a warm climb, but it was worth it. Now, let's see. Tuck in, Jess. There's nothing like a quiet picnic. This is a funny sandwich. Oh, no. It's the Major's toy soldiers. How did they get into my lunch? Oh, what a noodle I am. I've got the wrong parcel. I must have left my sandwiches on the hall table in the Major's house. It was this parcel that the address fell off. Come on, Jess. Back to the Major's. He'll be thinking his soldiers have run away. Down at Garner Hall, the Reverend Timms was trying to cheer the Major up. And P.C. Selby was looking for footprints. Anything the matter? asked Pat. What's going on? Robbery, said the Major. That's what's going on, Pat. My collection of soldiers, gone, all gone, what? Marched off without a sound. But there's a funny thing, the robbers left their sandwiches behind. Oh no, said Pat. They were my sandwiches. You see, I muddled the parcels up, my sandwiches and your soldiers. I left my sandwiches on your hall table and your parcel of soldiers was still in my bag. And here it is. Pat, you're a genius, said the Major. You've saved my new soldiers from the robbers. What? The best of the bunch, too. Good man. But I'm still hungry, said Pat. The Lord will provide, said the Reverend Timms. I'll just pop in for my sandwiches. Now then, Pat said P.C. Selby. I'll have to ask you for a statement. You can't go in there, Pat. Not till we've looked for fingerprints. But I want my sandwiches, said Pat. Those sandwiches are evidence, said P.C. Selby. Evidence, Pat, that's what they are. Nobody can touch them, not till the C.I.D. get here from Pencaster. And goodness knows when that'll be. I wonder if Sarah's got something nice for lunch, said Pat. I'm so hungry, Jess. I think we'll have to pop home and see. Bye. Bye, old chap. Bye, Pat. Home sweet home. Hello, anyone at home? It's me. Oh, you've never lost your sandwiches after all, have you? Said Sarah. Not lost, said Pat, but they're evidence now. Oh, well, I never. And Pat had to tell her the whole story of the robbery at Garner Hall. Jess was too busy to listen. I'll have to be on my way, said Pat. There are still lots of letters to be delivered. Mmm. Robbery or no robbery. Now you'll be passing the school just about the right time to pick young Julian up, said Sarah. Save me a trip. All right. I'll not forget. Bye for now. Come on, Jess. We haven't finished yet. In you get. Pat was on his way again. What's happening?
happened to Peter Fowle. Hello, Pat. Having trouble? I certainly am. My front wheel brakes have locked. Nearly threw me over the handlebars. I'll ask Ted Glenn to pop along with his toolkit. Here's something to read while you're waiting. Oh, good. It's my motorbike magazine. Great. Bye, Pat, and thanks. Pat called at Thompson Ground. Alf was helping Ted load some wood onto the lorry. Hello, Pat. Pat had some letters for Alf. Come and have a cuppa, said Alf. Dorothy's sure to have the kettle on. He was right. Just the job. Hello, Pat. What's all this about a robbery at the hall? said Alf. Pat had to tell the whole story again from the beginning. Oh, said Pat, I nearly forgot with all this talk about the robbery. Peter Fogg's stuck with his motorbike. He's broken down, about two miles back. Do you think you could give him a hand, Ted? No trouble. I'll pick him up when we've got this wood loaded. Thanks for the tea, said Pat. Goodbye. Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat's next stop was at Intake Farm. He met P.C. Selby coming out. Any news of the robbery? asked Pat. Good news and bad news, said P.C. Selby. They caught the robbers on the road to Pencaster, but there's no sign of the collection of toy soldiers. Bye for now. Cheerio, Pat. There was a newspaper for George Lancaster. Pat set out to find him. But where had he got to? Looking for me, Pat. Ooh, you made me jump, George. I thought the robbers were after me. Here's your Hen Farmer's Weekly. Oh, thanks, Pat. Then George told Pat how he dreamt he was being chased by a giant hen, which flew away just before he woke up. It's time I was flying away, said Pat. I'm supposed to be collecting young Julian from school. Now where has that cat got to? He might be after rabbits down the field, said George. He likes my rabbits, does your Jess? They went to look. Jess! 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 He sometimes comes round here. No sign of him, though. Jess! Jess! Pat found Jess with his rear end sticking out of a rabbit hole. Here he is, George. I think he's got himself stuck. Pat took hold of his cat as gently as possible and pulled. Something small and heavy rolled into the grass. George picked it up and looked at it. What's Jess found? said Pat. Looks like one of these old tin soldiers, said George. I used to have a box full when I was a lad. Could do with a bit of a clean. Did you say a tin soldier? Said Pat. Yes, why? The robbery. You must have heard. Hang on. Pat thrust his arm down the rabbit hole as far as it would go and brought out a shopping bag. He looked inside and found it full of toy soldiers. Jess has found the loot, said Pat. The robbers must have hidden them on their way to Pencaster. They must have passed your gate. Clever cut, said George. I must get these back to the Major, said Pat. He will be pleased.
Keep an eye on these, Jess. Five months. Five. Never mind, Jess. The Major will be so pleased to have his soldiers back. I'm sure he'll give you something nice. Pat remembered to pick Julian up from school. Am I late? Huh, not much, Dad. On the way, he told Julian all about the robbery and how Jess had found the soldiers down a rabbit hole. Garner Hall at last. Ted and the Major were still busy with the roof. What's a fellow doing here again, eh, what? Special delivery, Major. What, in a scruffy plastic bag? Bless my eyes, it's my soldiers. My precious soldiers. Thank you, Pat, you're a stout fellow. And Pat told the whole story yet again. But it was Jess that found them, said Julian. Wasn't it? It's a good place to hide something, said Ted. Down a rabbit hole. Now who'd think of looking there? We'd better be off home, said Pat. Sarah will think we've got lost. Take this with you, said Ted. And make sure you look at page two. Uh, thanks, Ted. I will. I don't know why Ted wants me to read the paper, said Pat. Bye. Bye, Pat, and thanks again. Julian couldn't wait to see what it was. Oh, it's about a reward. For anyone who finds the major soldiers, 500 pounds. Well, I never, said Pat. That'd buy a lot of fish for Jess. It's time to go home and tell Sarah all our news. Let me tell her first. It was a special day for Pat, but he was keeping it a secret. Now then, Jess, don't you give my secret away. Mrs. Goggins was looking out for Pat. She was very pleased about something. Hello, Pat, she said. There's a lot of post today. Pat didn't look too happy until he saw that most of it was for him. But who could be writing to Pat? One envelope had a drawing of a cat on it and the writing looked very much like Katie Pottage's. Why don't you open them? Then you'll know who sent them. So Pat did. What a surprise. They were all birthday cards. He stood them in a row along the counter. There was one from every person on his round. That was nice. But how did everyone know it was his birthday today? He'd kept it a secret all these years, and now they all knew. Funny. How on earth they found out, I couldn't say. But let me wish you a happy birthday too, and many happy returns. Pat bought six chocolate kittens. Then gathered up all his cards and letters and went on his way.
At Greendale Farm, the twins were looking out for Pat. Happy birthday, Pat, they said as he came in with the post. Mm, thank you. Mrs. Pottage had just come in from the kitchen. Happy birthday, she said. Pat showed the twins his cards. We've made you a cake. How did you know it was my birthday? said Pat. We're not telling, said Mrs. Pottage. It's a secret. <laughs> it was a secret, said Pat with a laugh. Here's a sugar mouse for Jess, said Tom. Thank you very much. Now let me see. Have I got everything? Cake, mouse, cards. Goodbye. Jess spotted the mouse. He thought he'd catch it before it got lost. No, said Pat. Save it for tea time. It won't run away. But Jess wasn't so sure. Hello, Reverend. A letter for you. Oh, thank you. Mm, been expecting this. And here's something for you to greet you on your birthday. Thank you, said Pat. It was a leather-bound Bible. Oh, thank you. But how did you know? He who reads shall learn. Very kind of you. Goodbye. Godspeed. There were some letters for Thompson Ground. Come in. Pat arrived just in time for a cup of tea. Thank you. Oh, your letter. Alf Thompson came in. Hello, Pat, he said. Happy birthday. He gave him a walking stick with a handle made from a sheep's horn. He'd made it himself. That'll be good for keeping dogs off. Thanks, said Pat. But how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, you'll have to find that out for yourself. Just keep your eyes open, said Alf, smiling. You're quite a famous postman, you know. Whatever does he mean, thought Pat. He was getting more and more puzzled, and his van was filling up with presents. Jess didn't like the stick. He thought the horn might butt him when he wasn't looking. Granny Dryden was busy cooking when Pat arrived with the letters. He'd brought her groceries too, as the mobile shop couldn't get up the lane to her cottage. 
Morning. Post. Granny Dryden had knitted something for Pat's birthday. Whatever was it? A woolly vest. It'll keep you warm in the winter, said Granny Dryden. <laughs> it looked very itchy. But Pat said, thank you, it's, it's just the right size. How did you know it was my birthday? Eh? I can't hear a word you say, said Granny Dryden. I need a new battery in my hearing aid. Uh, I'll bring you one tomorrow, said Pat. Goodbye. <laughs> At Miss Hubbard's cottage, there was a glass of fruit juice waiting for Pat. There were two letters for her. Miss Hubbard drank his health and wished him a happy birthday. Cheers. She gave him a steering wheel cover made of red velvet. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> she didn't tell him how she knew it was his birthday. Goodbye. At Intake Farm, George Lancaster showed Pat his special prize hens. They look champion, said Pat. They are, they're champion layers, said George. Just look at that. He gave him two dozen for his birthday and a dozen for the village school. Thanks for the eggs, George. Then Sam Waldron arrived and gave Pat a punnet of strawberries and a carton of double cream for his birthday tea. Thank you, Sam. on the lookout for Pat at the village school. The children had made a picture of him on a big sheet of card with Happy Birthday written underneath and all their names. They'd also made a model of his van, but they wouldn't tell him how they knew it was his birthday. had presents for them, a chocolate kitten each and the eggs from George Lancaster. Goodbye. The day's round was nearly finished. Pat was just looking to see if there were any letters to collect when Peter Fogg came along on his tractor. He stopped to wish Pat a happy birthday. Pat told him how everyone seemed to know about it. <laughs> Don't you know why? said Peter Fogg laughing. I wish I did, said Pat. Peter showed him a newspaper. It was this week's Pencaster Gazette. Have a look at this, he said. Pat was amazed. There was an article about him, headed Postman of the Year. It told all about his work, how he helped everyone, where he was born, and the date of his birthday. Well, said Pat, how did they find all that out? 
keep it as a souvenir, said Peter. Thanks, said Pat. I'll show it to the wife. <laughs> she will be pleased. All right, Jess, I'm coming. I know it's been a long day, but we're off home now. It's a pity no one knows when it's your birthday, Jess. Never mind. We'll have a little party tonight. Ooh, another nasty day, said Pat. Jess looked out at the rain. He hated wet days. What a day. Wet letters, wet everything. It was still raining when Pat reached the village post office. What dreadful weather. Just look at these letters. Imagine them getting so wet just being posted. It's like a wet wash day. <laughs> I see what you mean. Never mind, they'll soon dry. You'd best watch out for floods up the valley. There's more rain forecast, you know. Mm, don't you worry, Mrs. Goggins. The post will get through. Oh, it stopped raining. Cheerio. Pat was on his way. What a dismal day it was. Some people still had lights on indoors. What had happened to Peter Frog? Pat stopped to find out. It's this blooming rain. My old tractor's bogged down in the bottom meadow. It's our flooded down there. Then I went and fell in the mud. <laughs> you look as if you've had a bath in it. I just about have. I'm off home for some dry clothes, then I'll get the new tractor to pull the old one out. Good luck, said Pat. I think it's fairing up now. Cheerio. When Pat arrived at the school, some of the children were looking out to see if the rain had stopped. He was surprised to see Charlie Pringle running out for the letters instead of Bill Thompson. Hello, Charlie. Where's Bill, then? He's off school today. They say there's flooding up at Thompson Ground. He'll be helping his dad get the sheep in. Well, don't drop the letters. They've already had one wetting. <laughs> it's nice to see someone enjoying the rain, thought Pat. Watch it. Cheerio! Greendale Farm, he saw Peter Fogg again. He'd changed his clothes. Here, Pat! Come 
and have a look at this. He showed Pat his new tractor with its bulldozer blade. This'll shift anything, he said. <laughs> Bet it would, said Pat. Oh, here's your mail. Oh, ta. Bye. <laughs> Reverend Timms was having trouble with the rain, too. said the Reverend. The rain rains on the just and the unjust. Look out! I'll ask Ted Glenn to bring his ladders and have a look at that roof, said Pat. Bye. Farewell, Pat. Sam Waldron was just along the road. Take it steady, Pat, said Sam. The roads are flooding up the valley. <laughs> the old van will get me through, said Pat. I'll just take a bunch of bananas. The wife loves them. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Jess was glad to stay in the van to keep out of the wet. getting into the hills when they saw Mrs. Thompson standing in the road waving to make them stop. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. What's going on? said Pat. There are terrible floods in the top fields, Pat. And the water's brought tons of earth down and blocked the road. Come and see. Oh, dear me, said Pat. Can't we telephone the village for help? No, the lines are down. Well, can't we walk round it? No, oh, it's too dangerous with these floods. And you could be buried if the land started to slip again. Here comes Alf. He's going to try to get through with his tractor. Do you think you can do it? Said Pat. Oh, I'll have a jolly good try. Off he went at top speed. And got stuck. It's no good, said Al. We'll have to get help somehow. Then Bill came with his model aeroplane. I know, he said. 
We can put a message on my plane, and I can fly it across to Greendale Farm to get help. It's radio controlled, see? What a good idea. Clever lad. We'll send an airmail letter. So Pat scribbled a note. S-O-S. -S. That'll do it. He tied it to the plane with a bit of Alf's binder twine. Good luck. Let's hope it gets through. Oh, I think he'll manage it. He's a clever lad. He built it himself, you know. Bill started the engine. And off it flew. Away she goes. That's better than a van. <laughs> I wonder if I could swap mine for a helicopter. It seemed ages since the plane had gone. Pat was just thinking it must have crashed when he heard a powerful engine coming up the road on the other side of the blockage. It was Peter Fogg on his new tractor with the bulldozer blade. Got your message? Mind your back! Oh, oh. waved Sam Waldron through. There was just enough room. <laughs> Ted Glenn was mending a wall for Mr. Pottage. Pat had remembered something. Can you go and have a look at the church roof, Ted? The Reverend's got the church full of buckets. <laughs> I'll pop along when I finish this wall. Blooming rain. It makes no end of work. Miss Hubbard was on her way to choir practice. I'd turn back if I were you, said Pat. <laughs> well, you might have to swim home. Swim? said Miss Hubbard. It'll take more than a drop of rain to stop me. And on she went. I'll be on my way too, said Pat. Cheerio. As Pat wound his way along the valley, it looked like rain again but there was a warm fireside to look forward to <laughs> when all the letters had been delivered. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Bom, 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 bom. Thank <laughs> you.